Hi there. I'm Egan Mayor Mike McGuire, and I'm delivering Egan's State of the City as it was intended to be given on March 19th, 2020. Days prior to the event, we made the decision to postpone the State of the City due to COVID-19 with the hopes that we would still be able to gather at some point this summer. Unfortunately, that still isn't possible. So we've moved it to a digital format, but I'm giving the speech the same way I would have with hundreds of you in the same auditorium with me. Some points made in the speech may not be as relevant now, and the videos were filmed prior to what we now know as social distancing. So hang with us. We wrote and filmed this in a very different world. The point of still doing the State of the City, as it was written earlier this year, is to celebrate all that we've accomplished as residents and businesses and as a city in 2019. It's also to share our mission and vision and values as a community and a city. COVID-19 hasn't changed those. Our world has changed, including the outlook for many residents and businesses in our community. And I assure you that I and everyone here at the city is empathetic to that. We're also empathetic to the social and community distress related to the killing of George Floyd. Whether in response to COVID-19 and recession or our struggle to root out systemic racism, we will address the actions and adjustments we have all made during this time to remain safe, afloat, and just. But that'll be saved for next year and next year's State of the City. For now, without further ado, our 2019 State of the City. Egan is continually rated as one of the best communities to live in nationwide. The city is committed to award-winning service levels, and here's how we do it. Great service starts with listening to the community. We listen and respond to their hopes, desires, and goals. We value inclusion and access. It's what makes Egan a successful city and strong community. We have a culture of prioritizing public safety. We know we can count on our men and women to provide amazing service to every corner of our city. We take a lot of pride in being focused on making this community as safe as possible. Including faster response times to help you and your loved ones. Our city's stronger when we work together. We want to help those who want to invest in our community. We are a growing and diversifying city, and we are focused on making sure our services and priorities reflect that. Egan residents really do love our parks, which is why we want to partner with you to protect our natural environment so that Egan remains the place that we all love. Whether we are in City Hall or out in the community, we are committed to quality service in everything we do. Thank you. Welcome to the 2020 Egan State of the City presentation. And thank you also to the Egan City Council members and the city leaders for sharing who we are and how we work together in that opening video. We had a strong and successful 2019 as a city and as a community. And I believe that that's because as an organization, we lived our community values. Values like quality service delivery, listening and being responsive, a dedication to public safety, inclusion and accessibility, being fiscally smart and responsible, and reinvesting in our community. And I know that our city staff works every day to reflect those values, and they are a critical part of the state of our city. Thank you to all of you for living our community values in your work. I want to also acknowledge my colleagues on the Egan City Council for their contributions as well. We have been working together for many years. Their combined years of experience and service to our community is uncommon. That stability has been an asset to Egan and has helped to fuel our successes. Thank you to those of you who have made today possible, including our communication team and the good people at ETV for the teamwork that they displayed in putting together today's digital state of the city. And thank you to the sponsors of the event, the Dakota County Chamber, Regional Chamber of Commerce, Think Bank, and the Egan Convention and Visitors Bureau as well. Thank you for being engaged and invested in the state of our city and in the future of our community. 
I also need to thank my son Ian and my wife Janelle. Thank you for all the advice, guidance, and support that you've both provided me over the years. But today is about the state of the city. And let there be no doubt, the state of our city is strong and Egan's future is bright. Today, I present my 14th state of the city. So, for those of you who have the City of Egan punch card, you're now past the baker's dozen and you are one step closer to that free coffee mug and the Egan Dakota ring. So you have that going for you, which is nice. Of course, in those 14 years, our values in Egan have remained the same. We set high standards and strive for excellence in our service. These consistent values have fueled Egan's growth. Growth in population, in businesses, in infrastructure, and growth in the quality and the diversity of our community services. But with growth comes change. Egan is no longer the agricultural community that we were at our inception in the 1860s. We're no longer a quiet bedroom community. We are no longer a city that people just pass through to get to their final destination. We are the destination, a bustling city with many businesses, dining, and entertainment options. Our stability and consistency as a city is a big part of why Egan has continually been rated as one of the top places to live, not just in our region, but in our nation. Egan is now a thriving community that boasts one of the largest working and living populations in the state. We're a diverse community with thriving neighborhoods. We are home to 2,300 businesses, corporate, commercial, retail, and entertainment. We are home to a robust multimodal transportation and transit system that connects to local markets, national markets, and international markets through planes, buses, automobiles, bikes, and trails. It is the stability and consistency of Egan that has promoted growth and change and driven the changes in our city's operations. Today, I'm going to share what change and growth and consistency mean to us and how the city of Egan is continually working with all of you to ensure a bright, if not changing, future. Egan police and fire departments have always been a point of pride, specifically the character of our people, the exceptional training that we provide, and our dedication to the collective mission of keeping Egan safe and strong. It's our number one priority because consistently, it's your number one priority. While our fire department receives a 97% approval rating, we are always working to improve our service levels to ensure safety in all corners of our city. Over the past few years, as many of you know, we have been moving from the second largest volunteer fire department in the state to a full-time fire department with three stations staffed around the clock with EMT trained firefighters. The results are strong. Response times have been cut in half from 14 minutes to seven. This year, we made significant strides in that transition. We hired an additional 18 firefighters. And that means we'll have 36 full-time EMT trained firefighters at three stations serving 24 hours, seven days a week. That transition and service improvement comes with a cost. Fortunately, in 2019, we received one of the largest federal safer grants in the nation, $3.4 million to help fund hiring new full-time firefighters. This transition has required investment in equipment, the facilities to house the new staffing structure, and an investment in its people. Let's meet a few of those people right now. I felt like I wanted to be a firefighter ever since I was a kid, seeing, seeing the big red trucks going down the street. I knew when I was a kid that that's something that I wanted to pursue. I joined the fire department at age 18. My dad was also a volunteer firefighter at the time. I just fell in with everything that that career stood for. I've always wanted to do something to give back. Right now I just I can't see myself doing anything else. My wife is a paramedic so she kind of understands the scope of the, the job. I got a daughter that is a year old and I can tell that they're very proud. My wife teaches at Oak Ridge Elementary School. We both feel like we're giving back to Egan, back to the community where we live. My family is extremely supportive of what I do. They recognize that it was something I was really passionate about. They understand the danger element, but at the same time, they also understand that we spend a lot of time training. We are as safe as we can be on this job. 
the general public might see us in short five minute snippets when we're driving down the road. What they don't realize is that we're doing a lot of other things. We usually start out our day with uh, finding out what our schedule's like. We do our morning truck checks, make sure our gear is all good, all of our equipment is good on the truck. We do training as well so we can make sure we're still good up on our skills. You know, we have a number of calls that we respond to throughout the day. I mean, every, every call is different. Go to a, a, a smoke alarm and it turns out that there's an apartment on fire. You have to be adaptive and you, ha you have to keep your head. I worked as a part-time for eight years, and then when I transitioned to a full-time firefighter, I got to see the tools, I got to see the trucks, I got to work and train, and just having that knowledge base, I feel more comfortable, I feel more confident when I'm doing my job now. Having station staff 24-7 has enabled us to decrease our average response time from 14 minutes to seven minutes, which is huge in terms of incident response, life safety, and property preservation. We now have three fire stations covered 24-7 by full-time firefighters. We've been able to do this with the addition of the 18 new firefighters we've added in 2020. We have a really good group. They're excited to be here and serve the citizens of this community. What makes this career path worth it for me is the feeling of seeing the good things that happen in the, in the city and just being a part of it all. I feel this uh, career has allowed me to appreciate life. So when I'm at work, I see a lot of different things, but when I'm at home, I take the time to enjoy that time with my family, um, enjoy the little things that we're doing together. If we run into kids and we're on calls, you know, after we wrap up, before we clear, we'll give them truck tours. It's just nice to be able to get out and just kind of have that, that outreach and that interaction with the community. And it's been overwhelmingly positive. Knowing that I make an impact on uh, someone's life, whether it's one of my coworkers, someone within the city, or uh, someone from the public, that, that, that reward is what motivates me every single day. Thank you, TC, Jake, Jason, and your families, and all of our firefighters, and their families as well. We appreciate everything you do and will continue to do to keep our community safe. Our firefighters aren't the only ones who are working to help keep our community safe. The Egan Police Department consists of the best of the best, and I mean that. Many of our officers have advanced degrees and advanced training. They aren't just committed to professional development, they're genuinely interested in engaging the community and building relationships. Last year, Egan Police responded to over 55,000 phone calls. They continually build partnerships to help prevent crime, understand community needs, and enhance the safety and quality of life in Egan by attending 225 community events, engaging local businesses, schools, churches, civic groups, and 150 neighborhood watch groups within the 33 square miles of our city. It's not a surprise that Egan residents and businesses have affirmed our police department with a 94% approval rating. Last year, our new police department worked with other law enforcement agencies on a new and innovative approach, the now famous Busted by the Bus. Here's a look. a sting underway and it's so active that in the last minute here there were three deputy cars one by one they have gone off to make arrests and what they're doing is getting to the core of this issue which is distracted driving so today officers will be on a school bus and they're going to be looking for those distracted this operation is called busted by the bus because distracted driving is an even bigger deal when it's around school buses that could have kids on it police say when drivers do go around at 2 o'clock this afternoon and get this they've already pulled 75 people over they told me they also spotted someone who was high in narcotics in the bus that person is now in jail wow. so this is a very active operation and Amelia we're gonna see this going on especially when that hands-free bill kicks in this summer
Thank you, Chief New and Officer Moctimus and the others who put together the Busted by the Bus program together and for sharing that story. It's incredible, and I can attest that every person that I spoke to loved the program and is still on high alert whenever they're around a the school bus. Way to go, guys. The police department is also in the process of implementing the use of body-worn cameras, enhancing transparency, accountability, and community confidence in our frontline officers. The Egan Police Department is always adapting to new procedures and the need to enforce new laws. Few laws in recent history have had more exposure than the Minnesota's new hands-free law. And it's a good example of how we adapt and enforce new laws. We're going to be wrong to that address. Hi. Uh, Hi. 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 And I was, I don't know, you probably didn't see me, but I was in the right turn lane, and you were doing this. Reading something, and then as you go, you made a call. No, I didn't. Well, you put up your ear. So, what were you doing on your phone? Okay. So even under the old law, that would have been illegal. And I'm sorry, but today you are going to get a ticket, okay? Were you texting about the hands-free law? <laughs> okay. I'm, yeah, here's your, here's your ticket. Please drive safe, okay? This hands-free law is important legislation and was first introduced over a decade ago by our state senator, Jim Carlson. Thank you, Jim, and congratulations to him on the success of this important legislation. Let me wrap up our discussion of public safety with some recognitions. Two years ago, our community was honored to receive a national award for public safety by the International Council of Municipalities and Counties. But we didn't just rest on that award. The efforts by our fire and police departments, many of which I've just highlighted, have led to our community being awarded the top spot in the National Voice of the People Award for public safety again. Based on the input provided by Egan residents, the award reflects Egan's pride in our police officers and our firefighters. Chief New and Chief Scott, you and all of your members should be proud of that. Thank you to all of our public safety personnel. Public safety isn't the only aspect where Egan thrives. We take pride in our financial strength, stability, and fiscal stewardship. As a city, we know that our financial strength is a partnership between us as a city, our residents, and our businesses. Our job as the city of Egan is to balance all of our interests and to maintain a mutual trust. You trust us to provide the services and amenities that you need in a responsible manner, keeping costs in mind, but also investing in the quality of our city. So we take a measured approach to balance the interests and the needs of those who live, work, play, and do business in Egan. We know that quality of life and the bottom line are both important here. Our financial consistency helps drive our robust and diverse local economy. Egan's tradition of sound financial management has enabled us to achieve a triple A bond rating from both Moody's and Standard & Poor's. Only 1% of cities have a triple A rating from both. The agencies cite our low debt, strong management, and the strong area economy among the many factors contributing to this highest credit rating possible. That's a whole bunch of accountants speak, which matters, don't get me wrong. But let's connect that to how it impacts you and your, our, shared bottom line. Our fiscal responsibility as a city is a key ingredient to our economic success. Here's a quick look into our stewardship and service model. I've seen Egan grow so fast during my lifetime here. Last year, everything from Costco to small family businesses opened here. We chose Egan to open Harmony Health Chiropractic because I grew up in Egan and wanted to be part of the community that helped raise me. We're a small chiropractic clinic. It's just me and the office manager, Cheryl Pearson. The city was absolutely amazing to work with. They made sure all our questions were answered. They were able to give us all sorts of extra information and make sure we stayed on our timeline. So what's next? 
We carefully plan how our city develops. We work with all businesses that want to invest and grow in Egan. Egan is a successful city and a strong community because we care about our neighbors and neighborhoods. We invest in our community. So when a business chooses to come here, they're also investing in the strength of our community. Yeah, we need to review the plans to make sure all the public... That includes the literal groundwork we do to support them. Roads, water supplies, utilities, and other infrastructure. The plans are all good. We want to make sure everything gets built to code. That protects the owners, the people who work there, and their customers, now and for years to come. We perform thousands of inspections per year to protect our collective investments. That's true, no matter what the size of the project. The new Omni Hotel is just one of the many projects going on in Egan. It's a thriving community. The city staff has been so helpful to work with, we couldn't have gotten this done anywhere else. In my business, we work great as a team, and that's why it's been great working with the city of Egan. Employment growth in Egan remains high, thanks to businesses like Harmony Health, the Minnesota Vikings, and MV Egan Ventures, who now call Egan home. Our resilience in times of economic challenge is evident in our 18% employment growth rate over the past 10 years. That's a 4% higher rate than the rest of the metro region. And many of you have heard this before. Our resilience, flexibility, and consistency has helped us weather losses in the past and have resulted in some of our greatest assets. Central Park Commons, Vikings Lakes, and the Cedar Grove to name a few. Last year, you heard about our record-breaking 2017 with over $400 million in project valuation. In fact, we've had a number of record-breaking years over the past few years. In 2019, the Vikings didn't move to town. We didn't unveil a new plan to redevelop a Fortune 500 Lockheed Martin site, and no large outlet mall or shopping center was built. Even still, 2019, with over $245 million invested, was Egan's second largest year of valuation and tax-based growth, reflecting our community's economic diversity. These gains were spread out in developments across the city in different sectors, industrial, corporate, retail, and housing. Our new norm is diverse investments throughout the city that make us an even more stable and predictable city. Egan's Skyline is growing as well. The Omni Hotel and Resorts 14-story, four-star hotel and conference center will be an Egan amenity, a regional asset, and a national destination. The hotel complements the next phase of the Viking Lakes build-out, which will include a mix of housing, retail, entertainment, and more users. We also see Opus's new facility and the completion of the Prime Therapeutics 400,000 square foot office consolidation. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a few developments that some of our residents care most about. You can now get a Costco hot dog along with a lifetime supply of pretzels. You want chicken fingers? How about raising canes? No matter what your business is or what you have a flavor for, the point is that Egan is thriving and eating well. Beyond a growing number of homes, employers, and lunch spots, there are also signs that Egan's fiscal strength is a magnet for commercial and residential development. Businesses start up here or relocate here because Egan is abuzz with nearly 60,000 people working in the city each day. Egan is the seventh largest employment city in Minnesota, nearly tied with Duluth. And projections show that by 2040, over 70,000 people may work in our city. New retail locations provide much needed services and amenities for our residents and for our growing daytime population. And those quality of life amenities in turn make Egan a more attractive community for major employers as well. But this also brings me to our biggest challenges, which is identified again in our recent business survey. While we know that 9 out of 10 businesses value Egan as a place to do business, we've also heard the challenges that you face in finding qualified employees. Coupled with housing and transit for those employees, 
we know that these three factors will continue to be a challenge moving forward. Local, regional, state, and the federal levels of government will have to partner with public and private stakeholders to find long-term and sustainable solutions. Over the past year, we've begun the conversation with the Dakota County Regional Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber will continue to lead by hosting a summit on further conversations with our business community and stakeholders so that we can all work together. Without regional collaborative solutions, we will continue to read the reports and the articles on the dearth of multifamily rental homes and how it threatens to hold back our region's growth and economy, including here in Egan. There are always challenges in good times and in bad. As a city, we've consistently been an invested partner, helping identify and overcome future challenges, planning for economic shifts and market adjustments, maximizing our advantages. Advantages like Egan's location, investing in tomorrow's infrastructure, and maintaining high quality service levels and preserving Egan's business climate. We know that our consistency in what we do and how we do it is to you predictability and it's a key ingredient for your business's successes. Why are we so committed to that? It's good for all of us across every facet of our community. Our economic strength allows all of our community's priorities to remain strong. That includes preserving our environment and our natural resources. Starting with Egan's 58 parks, 350 lakes and ponds, and over 20,000 trees on public lands. Egan residents consistently rate our natural environment among our top priorities. So we work with residents through outreach and our advisory commissions, including the Energy and Environment Advisory Commission. Let's hear from one of our volunteer commission members and some members of our city staff to learn more about how we work together. Egan is really beautiful, no matter what season it is. Woods, wetlands, lakes. Protecting Egan's natural environment is a top priority for me and so many others in our community. And that's why I volunteer on the Energy and Environment Advisory Commission. The city has been really responsive to our ideas on a lot of issues. Butterflies, bees, and other pollinators need help. So the city put in new gardens specifically designed for them. We recommended more city support for electric vehicles. So the city is installing charging stations. Alternative energy is important too. So the city is using more solar power. We increased energy efficiency while we renovated City Hall. We also added water quality protections here and at Cascade Bay in the Civic Arena. So when it rains, water doesn't pool on the pavement, it'll actually soak into the ground. We launched an adopt a storm drain program so neighbors can help protect our lakes and wetlands. All you have to do is remove the leaves and debris from the street drain. And imagine how much stuff we could take out of our lakes and wetlands with people adopting storm drains throughout the city. For 30 years, we have been a leader in monitoring our lakes, tracking changes, and using the best science possible to improve water quality. That's why we treated Carlson Lake and others last year to knock down phosphorus so it doesn't fuel algae growth. We know people value fishing. It's one of the most popular activities in the state. That's why we hold events like this free ice fishing clinic. We want to include everyone. Right. Got a pole, need a pole. People are curious and they don't know how to start. So we provide free gear and show them how to fish. We do free fishing clinics in the summer too. People may not know this, but we also stock fish, including some of the smaller ponds. So you can catch fish within about a mile of every home in Egan. Look around and anywhere. You can see the beauty that we've been able to preserve here in Egan because the city is partnering with people like me who love the outdoors. Thank you to everyone involved and in particular to our advisory commission members. As you heard, this marks 30 years of our water quality program and we are excited to highlight the impact it has had on our city throughout this year. Egan has clean and accessible water because we've invested in it. You can fish, kayak, or canoe in our water using docks, entry points, and piers 
that we put in to dozens of lakes. And speaking of fishing, we've stocked our waters with over 22,000 fish in the past three years. That's a lot of fish. Now, you don't have to go up north to embellish a story. Water conservation has been a part of Egan's culture for a long time, much longer than the 30 years of our water management program. That value and tradition has carried forward to today. Through partnership with civic groups, our watershed district, and our investments in a first-class water services team, we are a leader in water quality and management. Unfortunately, not all of our environmental stories have such a happy ending. Cities across this region are now battling emerald ash borer, and we are no different. Unfortunately, this isn't a battle that we can win, and it's advancing faster than we expected. In the next five to six years, our crews will have to remove more than 2,000 ash trees, at least 10% of all of the trees currently on public property. That's why this year, we're increasing our forestry team to help remove these trees quickly and limit the danger and damage of infested, rotting, and falling trees. Longer term, we hope to replace those ash trees with more sustainable, less vulnerable trees to preserve our robust, beautiful urban canopy. I'm talking only about ash trees on public lands right now. The reality is, it's going to take all of us to replace the trees affected by emerald ash borer. So, we're asking you as individuals and organizations to help. Plant trees to make sure we don't just maintain, but grow our green roof. Throughout all of Egan's development and growth, we've maintained a consistent commitment to our natural environment, investing in parks, preserving in green space, and protecting our water. And we hold those who build or grow here accountable as well through environmental standards like our tree mitigation fund and dedicated park funding. We are committed to conservation, sustainability, and innovation. In fact, our efforts have led us to being one of 14 cities in Minnesota rated at the highest level of the Green Step Cities program. Our commitment to parks and recreational opportunities in every corner of Egan is another consistent and defining characteristic of our community. Our parks and recreation team take a lot of pride in what they do. Motivated by the goals of inclusion and community connection, they are consistently coming up with new places and spaces for everyone, no matter what age, interest, or physical ability. Let's take a field trip and see how. So I grew up playing hockey outdoors and I found this rink on eBay a year ago and uh, decided to buy it. I'm Mike Larson, I love Egan, and I love hockey. This park doesn't have uh, a warming house. We happen to be up in Canada where I found this Airstream on Craigslist. It's been a great opportunity for the Egan Hockey Association to partner with the city of Egan. Having the Sperry Tower as a landmark has been a great way to let people know where the rink is. So hot dog hockey has been something that we've done for years outdoors, and it combines two things that kids love. They love hot dogs and they love hockey. Now, because we have this outdoor facility, parents can mingle around the fire, they can watch their kids over the boards. It's a great way to build community. We want people to have recreation opportunities year round. Tubing has been popular for years at Tramp Farm. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. We are always looking for the next big idea and to include and serve more people. We just opened up a new park building here that's bigger and more energy efficient. And we aren't done. This year, we will be working with more community members on our all-inclusive park. It will include trails, basketball, and a large playground that will be accessible for all abilities to experience the benefits of play. We also changed the way we do business. We've created a new fee options program to make sure all Egan residents have access to activities regardless of income. Last summer, we started the Mobile Lunchbox Program, a partnership with the Open Door Pantry in Egan. Every child that attended our summer program at Ron Park and anyone under the age of 18 could receive a free lunch. 
We also have a program called Rec on the Go. We're delivering free recreation programs to youth in our community parks. We play games, we do art projects, and we have a lot of fun. As a volunteer on the Park and Recreation Advisory Commission, I have a voice. And my goal is to make sure that as many people as possible can participate. When I moved to Egan, it was the variety of events and activities that made me feel welcome. It's important that the seniors who have mobility issues have pickleball courts to play on. It's great that Cascade Bay can be there putting in the splash pad. It was a huge hit and the public art in Egan is just growing by leaps and bounds, so that's really exciting. Art Block 2019, we had 23 collaborators, we had over 40 events, all happening in this one square mile. All ages, from seniors to students, got a chance to connect and create community through viewing, creating, and hearing art. We also dedicated more public art, including the Lone Oak Art Tree here at City Hall. We are always connecting, partnering, and listening to our community members to find and create our community's next treasures. It's great to see how our staff creates and harnesses collaborations like their work with Mike, a hockey dad, and a golf buddy of mine as well. That video validates their teamwork with community from hockey moms and dads to active seniors, Egan's nonprofit community, and more. Another demonstration. Last summer, nearly 100 people attended a ribbon cutting for our new pickleball and bocce ball courts at Quarry Park. One of them doesn't play pickleball, but really made an impression on me. Not that guy. Dan and his wife, Ray, live next door to the park. And when we asked the community to weigh in on the vision for the park, Dan, who has muscular dystrophy, wanted to talk bocce. Bocce ball is an activity that can be played individually, as a team, competitively, or to socialize. And it is easily adapted to people with limited mobility. He loves to stay active, and playing bocce helps him to do that. So we pitched the idea for bocce courts to Paul Graham in our parks department, thinking maybe in a few years we'd be able to get the bocce balls rolling. Uh, sorry, it's a bad pun. Dan was pleasantly surprised the following week when Paul called and said that they had the opportunity to design and to install some bocce ball courts. He asked for Dan's help to make sure that they got it right. Within just a few months, with Dan's help and advice, we were playing bocce and, well, Dan was once again schooling us in bocce ball, but this time it was on the court. I think it's a powerful example of what we get from reaching out, asking people to engage, and working together. To me, the story is about so much more than bocce. It's about building an inclusive community where there's space for all people and all abilities. I like to think that Dan and Ray learned a little bit about our city, but what I truly value, what might be more important, is what our city learned from the seemingly simple act of working to hear and respond to our residents and to learn their needs. Thank you, Dan and Paul, for both of your work on that. There are more great stories from this park as well. If you would have gone there on Friday, you would have seen an active group of seniors gathering and building community both on and off the courts through weekly potluck happy hours and other gatherings. And those aren't the only connections that we're making. We're proud of the 162 miles of trails and 20 miles of sidewalk connections that we have throughout the community. And we're always looking for ways to build on and connect the current bicycle and walking paths in Egan to anticipate future needs. Our public works and parks and recreation teams are working cross-departmentally to build out Egan's bike and pedestrian master plan. That will help us to identify gaps in the network and guide us where to invest and build literal and figurative connections within our community. Our award-winning Parks and Recreation team is also preparing a Parks and Recreation Facility Study, assessing the needs of our facilities and opportunities for the next 20 years and beyond. This will help us maximize the value of our current assets, Cascade Bay, the Civic Arena, the Egan Community Center, and identify needs and opportunities, for example, at the Art House, or I suppose more technically the Art Rambler, or perhaps a Field House or other indoor recreation facilities. 
Our vision, values, and ability to invest in our green spaces and recreation is what makes Egan such a great place for another key part of our city, families. In fact, Edina Realty named Egan as the top city for young families in 2019. When you couple all of that with our strong schools, people want to be in Egan. That's why we are growing. We'll measure that growth officially this year. The census launched the effort to count every person that resides in the United States and here in Egan. The census will tell us the makeup of our nation and our community, who we are, who we're becoming, and the growing diversity of Egan. The census is important. It determines how state and federal funding is allocated for things like roads, schools, economic development, and a host of critical efforts. We want everyone living here in Egan to be included and to count. So we hope you'll use your voice in the civic and business communities to join with us, local government and the chamber, to encourage that every person be counted. Here in Egan, we believe that everyone that calls Egan home counts. And our efforts to be an inclusive and accessible community reflect that. Here's our approach. Parks and Recreation is proactively reaching out to our community through electronic engagement tools to ensure voices are heard, whether you can attend a community meeting or not. They are also making sure that our surveys are accessible by proactively offering translations on both our bike and pedestrian plan and our facilities study. We continue to make strides on equity and inclusion. City staff have volunteered to be members of the city's race, equity, and inclusion team and are tasked with driving challenging conversations about how we operate best and serve all of our community. For example, last year, Ludi Rivamonte and Jenny Wegner provided all city staff with an implicit bias training. Over 200 staff members gathered in classes having sometimes uncomfortable but necessary conversations about how well our systems and our city serves and sees all of the communities within our increasingly diverse city. Our engagement efforts are consistently evolving and changing as our needs and circumstances change. When a tragedy struck on Diffley Road, we responded, accelerating our ongoing work in that corridor with ISD 196, Dakota County, the state, and engineers, we expanded the conversation through focused and intentional engagement with residents, parents, engineers, and students. Each group having opportunities to see, learn, and share feedback, and to shape the long-term changes and solutions that are emerging. Look for additional public hearings and considerations in City Hall and in Hastings in the coming months. City outreach efforts have sparked active and engaged communities in Egan. For example, our newest community gem, the Egan Art Block, where we are creating community and connections through art. And our Market Fest continues to draw hundreds of people through great food, art, and entertainment year after year. And last, but certainly not least, our Food Truck Festival continues to grow. Over 10,000 people showed up last year. It's these events and more that bring people together and highlight the vibrancy of our city. As a city, we're working to reflect our community's vibrancy in one of our greatest city assets, City Hall. Through art, light, nods to our past, accessible inviting spaces where we can all comfortably gather and collaborate, our City Hall renovations show a vibrant and forward-thinking city and reflect the partnership between city and community that makes Egan a successful city and a strong community. I want to thank Diane Miller, Andrew Pimentel, and Chief Roger New for leading those efforts. I also want to thank city staff who have been couch surfing in different fire stations, maintenance bays, evidence lockers, and atriums for the past two years while the reconstruction took place. You have endured the heat, the cold, noise, intrusion, sometimes all in the same day. Thank you to all of you. And a special shout out to our community development, administration, and our engineering staffs who have borne the brunt of it all. Thank you for your resiliency and your flexibility.
Inside City Hall, we are always looking to improve outcomes and service delivery while being good stewards of financial and natural resources. Similar to how you run your business, we are committed to being smart, using data to inform decisions, creating performance metrics, and holding ourselves accountable. Egan is fortunate to have one of the best GIS, Geographic Information Systems teams, anywhere. Years ago, the City of Egan invested in a GIS team to map our infrastructure and connect our services and service management tools. We do this the same way the private sector does, measuring, tracking data, and finding efficiencies. Because of our focus on gathering data, simply and consistently, for the past 25 years, we have avoided the struggles of cities when it comes to infrastructure mapping. Data collection and management are built into our processes and organizational culture. We are a leader in using GIS technology to achieve more efficient processes, improve data quality, and increase cross-departmental functionality. Okay, what does all of what I just said mean? Well, it means that we can plow snow, pave streets, and manage our fleet more efficiently. It means we can monitor and improve our use of resources, including salt, sand, fuel, equipment, and even people. It means we can track our utilities and assist customers quickly. It means that our information and how we operate can be shared more easily with ourselves and with your businesses. Earlier, I mentioned our forestry team's efforts on Emerald Ash Borer. This technology allows our forestry team to track our trees by species, inspection, and treatment status, and track communications with private property owners. I'm proud of this work and, and how we're leveraging it. I'm also excited to challenge us to do even more, to find even more efficiencies, to streamline our fleet, and to provide faster service, to save resources, to protect our bottom line, and our environment. The state of our city remains strong because we are consistently investing in our community, challenging ourselves and balancing the desire for stability with the constant reality of change. Egan is arguably even more of a successful city than we have ever been in the past. Our success is growing exponentially. I say this because some consider the expansion of Egan to have happened in the 90s and to be somehow isolated to that decade. When I joined the council almost 20 years ago, we applauded the way growth was handled, as we should have. But we have successfully managed the continued cycles of growth and to build off those prior successes and standards. Each cycle of growth has created a new, but always temporary, new norm. Egan is very much changing. We are more diverse than ever, economically and demographically. It's creating a change in the fabric and vision of Egan, from a bedroom community to a vibrant destination city. And it's changing the way we do business, providing services so that we can meet the needs and demands of our city today and in the future. But embracing this change is not coming at the cost of the consistency that you expect and rely on. The changes we see and are making do not jeopardize our values and principles of high quality service delivery, of fiscal prudence, of care and stewardship for our natural resources, and investing in the quality community that we are all proud of. The consistency we collectively maintain and the changes we embrace are what makes Egan's future so bright. Thank you for each one of your contributions that have helped make Egan strong. We'll finish by looking at what makes us the Egan that we love, a successful city and a strong community.